नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादे पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासवि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे आराध्य भगवान ब्रजेश तनय तम वृंदावन रम्या काचित पासनाजवधू वर्गेन वाकता श्रीमद्भागवत प्रमाण ममल प्रेम कुमो महाचैतन्य महाप्रभोर्मतमिद तत्पर अनाता चरी चिरा सदारिदय कंदरे स्फुत वाशची नंदना जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय निनंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जया गौर भक्त वृंद जगत मंगल द्वैत मंगल गुण था मंगल चरित्र सदा मंगल जारना हरे कृष्ण वी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ द डियर डिवोटीज हु हैव जॉइंड अस over youtube live over facebook live and dear devotees who've joined us over zoom we welcome each and every one of you to this day 83 of shri gauramrita before we proceed we would like to announce and congratulate the devotees who have participated in the quiz session from day 82 we'd like to congratulate hari prashad prabhu mother amrita radhika anjudi vijayanti lalita mataji मीतांजलि प्रधान नूतन पुरोहित माताजी तिथि मित्रा माताजी जनेश्वर गौरांग प्रभु वर्षाना चित्रा माताजी हरि कृष्ण मद्दाली प्रभु एंड रंजनी गोपिका माताजी वी थैंक ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द क्विज वेरी वेरी एंथुजियास्टिकली एंड बिफोर वी प्रोसीड वी आल्सो हैव अ वंडरफुल अनाउंसमेंट टू मेक दैट वी आर वेरी 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 हैप्पी and we welcome to the shri brahma madhva gauriya vaishnava sampradaya two of our very wonderful devotees who have been recently initiated by his holiness jay pataka swami in chennai they are very close members of the bhakti mellows family we'd like to congratulate hema mataji who is now blessed with the name hemangi radharani devidasi Hari Hari Bol congratulations Mataji we are so happy for you and we also congratulate our dearest Raji she has been blessed with a beautiful name uh i forget the name uh anyways um uh, i think i have the name give me one second uh one minute i am so sorry for this this is, this is so wonderful that uh, these devotees have shown their commitment to sri to uh, accept a guru in the brahma madhva gauriya sampradaya and to further their spiritual life and serve in the mission of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu serve in the mission of shri la prabhu pad and rajeshwari 
dearest uh, Rali was blessed with the name Rasarati Gaurangi Devi Dasi. Beautiful, Rani beautiful Rani. name. And uh, we congratulate both of you for you know, receiving these wonderful commitments and welcome you to the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Hari Hari Vo. So today in session 83, we will continue to describe the transcendental treasure trove of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotional pastimes. We discuss how Lord Gauranga arrives in Sri Nilachalatham, which we discussed last time, how Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya, he teaches Gauranga Mahaprabhu Vedanta philosophy. And then how Lord Gauranga defeats Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya. Then we'll conclude today's session by describing the Falastuti, the benefits we receive by listening to these transcendental pastimes of Sri Gaurahari. So in our last session, in session 82, we heard how Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he had arranged for a huge Jagannath Mahaprasadam feast for Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and for all the Vaishnavas, the associates who had joined Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. And how Lord Gauranga, with great, great ecstasy, he honored Jagannath Mahaprasad, especially the Labra Sabji, the mixed vegetable Sabji. And how Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu personally spoke about the glories of Sri Jagannath Mahaprasad, that how do all of us, we, how do we have the, the opportunity to relish this most rare Mahaprasad of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is through the blessings of Bhimala Devi or Katyayani Devi. So now we will continue. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in his Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lida, chapter 6, text 118, he says, Aradino Mahaprabhu, Bhatta Charja Shane, Anande Kurila Jagan, Jagannath Darshane. The next morning, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya together visited the temple of Lord Jagannath, and both of them were in a very pleasant mood. Hari Hari. And then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya then said to Lord Chaitanya, that, my dear son, you are such a handsome young man. Because Sri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was all but 24 years old. Hari Hari. And his and we have we have heard and described his beauty, his beautiful eyes, extending all the way to his ears, he like lotus petals, his prime of his youth, and his broad shoulders like lion, and his long arms, ajanulambita, all the way extending towards his knees, very tall, and and very handsome, and so. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, who was the head of the Mayavadis, the Vedantists, those who have understood the end of the Vedas, Vedantists, and very knowledgeable in all the Shastras. That was the purpose of life, to, to read and understand the scriptures and explain the scriptures to others. That was Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He looked at Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and said, you are a very handsome young man. You know that, right? <laughs> and do you also know if you want to maintain your sannyas vows, you will have to study Vedanta diligently. You will have to know the difference between matter and spirit and be committed to Brahma, spirit, spiritual nature. Then by studies of Vedanta, it would awaken that required attitude of renunciation. At such a young age, you have taken sannyas. If you are serious about it, you need to develop that attitude of renunciation by studying scriptures. And so the Lord said, how can I study scriptures? My Guru Maharaj, when I went to him, he told me to just chant the holy name. From whom should I study scriptures? 
Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya said, I, I can, I'm here, I can teach you. And so the Lord accepted his invitation to learn from Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya. Sata dina parjanta, aiche karena shravane, bhalo mando nahi kahe, vashi matra shune. Thus for seven days continuously, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu listened to the Vedanta philosophy expounded by Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And as he was listening intently, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not say anything, did not indicate whether he agreed with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya or did not agree with him, whether what Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was saying was right or wrong, no comments. He was just very intently just listening, simply sat there and listened to the Bhattacharya. So we must understand that from now onwards, we are actually going to be concentrating more on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. From this point onwards, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is kind of taking over because we are in the last chapter now of the Chaitanya Mangala as well as the Chaitanya Bhagavata. So they just give a one-liner that Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was defeated and Mahaprabhu gave his mercy to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. But what actually happened is revealed in great detail by Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami now. Now we must remember that Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur and Srila Lotan Das Thakur, both of them in both of their books were very clear from the very beginning that they are going to be describing only from the childhood pastimes of the Lord till the youthful pastimes of the Lord. So they are not going to go into the zones of each other. And after the sannyas ceremony of the Lord, the more detail is actually found in only Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So therefore now we are in the Madhya Leela of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita in chapter 6 where <clears throat> Srila Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, let's see what he is saying. He says, Ashtama diva shetare uche sarvabhoma shata dinu koro tumi vedanta shravana on the eighth day, after seeing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is just sitting so idle, not even responding anything, not speaking anything, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya spoke to Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and said, you have been listening to the Vedanta philosophy from me continually for seven consecutive days. And when Sarvabhama saw that Gauranga Mahaprabhu was not asking any questions, but simply listening silently, just quietly, Mahaprabhu is listening. Sarvabhama said, the study of Vedanta is actually very, very demanding. Sorry about this. He said that the study of the Vedanta is actually very demanding. My dear Goranga, you know, a student who wishes to understand the material properly is generally obliged to ask questions to clarify the difficult answers. You know, the difficult areas to understand it better, you must ask questions. So immediately Goranga Mahaprabhu responded. What did he say? Goranga Mahaprabhu said, my dear Sarvabhauma, you told me to listen, not to ask any questions. Therefore, I have just been listening to you. Actually, I find no difficulty in understanding the meaning of the sutras because the words of the Vedas are self-evident like the sun. On the other hand, I find your explanations to be very confusing. I find that your explanations are trying to hide the clear meaning of the sutras just like the clouds are covering the sun. Now, as soon as Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he heard Goranga Mahaprabhu speaking like this, he felt a little insulted by the Lord's comments and indeed felt somewhat angry 
you know sarvabhoma bhattacharya who is he sarvabhoma is actually the incarnation of brahaspati as we see here he is the guru of the devatas but to teach a very important lesson to the world in general and to devotees especially shri goranga mahaprabhu even put sarvabhoma bhattacharya into this illusion of the vedanta philosophy of the mayavad philosophy then after this sarvabhoma then started to debate the meaning of the word brahman with the lord and sarvabhoma established that brahman was without form or any qualities and he quoted all of this from the scriptures as evidence he quoted the shastra and the lord showed with logic and scriptural reference that brahman possesses form and qualities so at this point when sarvabhoma asked mahaprabhu to start asking questions that's when he spoke and when sarvabhoma bhattacharya started telling about the mayavad aspect quoting from the shastra that's when shri goranga mahaprabhu started establishing the personal form of the lord so in text 140 of the chapter 6 in madhya leela krishna das kaviraj goswami says sarveshwarya paripurna shayam bhagavan tare nirakar kori karo ho vyakhya shuni the supreme absolute truth is a person the supreme personality of god is full with all opulences you are trying to explain him as impersonal and formless then shri chaitanya mahaprabhu he continued whatever vedic mantras describe the absolute truth impersonally only prove in the end that the absolute truth is a person the supreme lord is actually to be understood in two features impersonal and personal he further explained if one considers the supreme personality of god it in both features he can actually understand the absolute truth and shri prabhupad explains this beautifully saying god by definition is complete if he has to be complete he should include all the features that we see in this material world and more we see persons in this material world so he must have a personality and we see impersonal objects in this material world so he must also be impersonal if we say god is only a person but doesn't have any impersonal aspect that is also incomplete mm. because he does not have impersonal he does not have something mm. or if we say no god is only impersonal there is no personality that is also incomplete the complete understanding for god to be complete he has to be a person and also have an impersonal understanding and this is the teaching of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu achintya bhed abhed tattva the simultaneous oneness and difference between the living entities and the supreme absolute truth there are mayavadis who say no the brahman is the absolute truth the impersonal is absolute there is no personality personality is actually an illusion this mm-hmm. is what the mayavadi say and then there are uh, those who are devotees of the person god and they say well god is a person there is no impersonal aspect and they both fight amongst each other for centuries <laughs> and then shri shri chaitanya mahaprabhu came and he resolved no god is a person he also has a impersonal aspect but the personal aspect is the source of the impersonal aspects mm-hmm. and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu explained such a person who has the complete understanding of absolute truth knows that personal understanding is stronger because we see everything in this world is full of variety no one can see anything that is not full of variety then how can the supreme truth not be full of variety how can the supreme truth be just impersonal without any variegatedness 
the Mayavadis, they see the, the, the source of misery in this material world is because there is variety. So in the absolute truth, there should be no variety. That is incorrect and actually incomplete understanding of the absolute truth. Then Mahaprabhu continued to quote from the Srimad Bhagavatam. In text 149, it is explained. Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam, nandagopa brajakasam, yan mitram paramanandam, purnam brahma sanatanam. Mahaprabhu explained how greatly fortunate are Nanda Maharaj, the cowherd men, and all the inhabitants of Rajabhumi. There is no limit to their fortune because the supreme absolute truth, the personality of God at the source of all transcendental bliss, the eternal supreme Brahman has actually become their friend. Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu quoted this verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 14th Chapter, Text 32. Then Mahaprabhu continued to quote, Satchidananda Maya Haya Ishwara Sarupa Dina Amshe Chichakti Haya Dina Rupa The Supreme Personality of Godhead in His original form is full of eternity, knowledge, bliss. The spiritual potency in these three portions, Sat, Chit, and Ananda, assumes three different forms. In fact, even the self-satisfied sages, they perform devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Such are the transcendental qualities of the Lord. They are full of inconceivable spiritual potency. Then, after speaking like this, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu quoted the famous, the very, very famous Atmarama verse. Atmarama verse is from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, seventh chapter, text 10, which says, Atmarama Shamurayo Nirgrantha Apiyudukame Kurvantiyai Sukim Hapim this is a verse that needs to be memorized. If you are able to memorize, please memorize this very famous verse quoted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself against the Mayavadis in Canto 1, Chapter 7, Text 10. Which means those who are self-satisfied and unattracted by external material desires are also attracted to the loving service of Sri Krishna, whose qualities are transcendental and whose activities are wonderful. Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Krishna because he has such transcendentally attractive features. After hearing this Marama verse quoted by Goranga Mahaprabhu, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said to Mahaprabhu that, my dear Goranga Mahaprabhu, please explain this verse to me. I have a great desire to actually hear your explanation of this wonderful verse. And then Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu said, first, mm -hmm. let me hear your explanation, Sarvabhama. After that, I'll explain what little, what little bit I know, I will also explain at that. Then Sarubhama Bhattacharya then began to explain the Atmaram verse. And Bhattacharya, he explained this Atmaram verse in nine different ways on the basis of scripture. And after hearing this explanation, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was smiling a little and he began to speak. He said, This Atmaram verse was discussed at Naimi Sharanya, at a me meeting of many great sages headed by Shaunaka Rishi. They had questioned Srila Sutta Goswami, who had presided during that meeting, about why Srila Shukadeva Goswami, who was a Paramhamsa, already in the transcendental position, was attracted to a discussion of the qualities of Krishna. 
In other words, they wanted to know why Sri Shukadev Goswami, who is already transcendental, is engaged in the study of Srimad Bhagavatam. So first, Mahaprabhu gave the context in which the Atmaram verse appears in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Then Mahaprabhu immediately first glorified Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Mahaprabhu told him, my dear Bhattacharya, you are exactly like Brihatspati, the priest of the heavenly kingdom. No one in this world has the power to explain the scriptures in such a wonderful way that you have explained it. My dear Bhattacharya, you have certainly explained this verse because of your vast learning, but you should know that besides this scholarly explanation, there is another purport to this verse. And then, so we see, what do we learn from this? That Mahaprabhu didn't directly say, no, 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 no. Your explanation is wrong, Sarvabhoma. What you're saying is wrong, wrong, wrong. You are gone. Now hear from me. No, Mahaprabhu was not speaking like that. Mahaprabhu glorified Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya because of his vast learning, you know, respecting his age, respecting his position. Mahaprabhu gave him that honor. That is the quality of a Vaishnava. This is what Mahaprabhu is teaching by his own personal example. That when we are also dealing with anybody, we must be very careful that, you know, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's, there is not an iota of pride in him. Nothing. He knows everything. He's the Supreme Lord. So Mahaprabhu, he is still glorifying Sarvabhoma. And then upon the request of Sarvabhoma, Lord Goranga began to explain this verse. Now, before we understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's explanation, it is very important to understand today in this world, we need such etiquette and this attitude of active listening without uh, with, with respect, active listening, we can disagree with people, but still respect them. Nowadays, we get so attached to our position that someone who is of an opposite position or having an opposite viewpoint, we just hate them. But we can disagree and yet be respectful towards each other. That's what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu here is teaching. He, we will see that he heavily disagreed with Sri Chaitanya, Sri Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, but he still gave all respect to him. And Srila Prabhupada also exemplified this in his life. Mm -hmm. Srila Prabhupada, when he first went to the West, he he was he was received by Gopal Agarwal, and he was staying in his house for some time. Then he went, uh, he used to attend. Then he went a little later to Acharya Mishra's uh, yoga studio. And in that yoga studio, Acharya Mishra would, uh, his students would come and he would give lectures and also teach some yoga, but also give lectures on Mayavad. And Srila Prabhupada, he was completely opposed to Mayavad. You can see in every purport of his, uh, every line of his purport, there are two uh, themes. One is against against materialism, and second is against Mayavad. And he would, because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so much against Mayavad, he would say, Mayavad bhashya sunile hoya sarvanash. If you even hear submissively the Mayavad version of the absolute truth, Hoy Sarvanash, everything goes away. Your spiritual life is destroyed. And so Srila Prabhupada had several uh, arguments against Mayavad. And, uh, but he would listen. He would be at the back of the class of Acharya Mishra. He would listen to those Mayavad arguments and he would keep making some comments at the back that, <laughs> no, this is not correct. If God is absolute, how not? And he would continue like a little bit preaching to his uh, students. And then later he would have heavy arguments with Acharya Mishra, heavy disagreements that, no, I don't agree with your position. 
and he would give his arguments against Mayavad with Acharya Mishra. But one time, Acharya Mishra fell severely ill and he had to cancel his classes. His students would come and meet sometime. But Srila Prabhupada, he was by Acharya Mishra's bedside day and night, serving him, uh, making different kinds of medicines that he knew as a, as a chemist and, and Ayurveda medicines as well. And he brought him back to health. Day and night, he would serve him and respect him. And Acharya Mishra was, was so touched. He said, Srila Prabhupada, I thought you didn't like me. And, <laughs> and Srila Prabhupada said, you are a part and parcel of Krishna. I love everyone. But you would, you would argue with me with such passion. He said, yes, I do not agree. Even now, I don't agree with your uh, philosophy. But I love you as a person. You may not understand that you are part and parcel of Krishna, but I understand and I'm serving you in that mood. So Srila Prabhupada would heavily disagree with people, but then he would serve them. He would have this position of always respecting them as a spiritual part and parcel of Krishna. Similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also giving the same example, disagreeing with Srila Sri Sarvabhama Bhattacharya but always just be very respectful. He would maintain the dignity of Sri Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Without being angry, while being very respectful, he would you know, put his arguments dispassionately. And so when Sarvabhama Bhattacharya requested Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to explain this verse. And Mahaprabhu started doing it without touching upon the nine explanations that Sarvabhava Bhattacharya gave, Mahaprabhu started explaining this Atmaram verse. So now let's see how Mahaprabhu was explaining these, this Atmarama verse. There are actually 11 different words in the Atmarama verse. Atmaramascha munayo, Atmaramascha munayo, everything. So Mahaprabhu explained each word one after the other, as we can see here. He said Atma has 10 meanings. The word Atma in Atmaramascha munayo, the first word is Atma. It has 10 meanings. Atma can refer to body sometimes, depending on the context it is used. Atma can refer to the mind, even in Bhagavad Gita, depending on the context of the verse, the, the meaning of the word Atma changes. Or Atma can refer to the absolute truth, it can refer to the soul, it can refer to uh, intelligence differently. And that's how he explained 10 different meanings of the word Atma based on the context that it is used. And what Mahaprabhu specifically did is that he took each word of this Atmarama word and combined it with Atmarama. That how are they in the context of Atmarama? Means one who is always self-satisfied. Atmarama basically means a self-satisfied person. So each of the words in the Atmarama verse combined with the word Atmarama, Mahaprabhu thus explained the Atmarama verse to Sarvabhama Bhattacharya in 18 different ways. Then you said Atma has 10 meanings, but Atma Ram is one who enjoys Rama, one who enjoys in these seven different ways uh, as absolute truth, as the body, the mind, the endeavor. It can mean so many different things. And then he said Atma Ramascha Munayo. So Muni, Muni has six different meanings. One who is thoughtful, Muni can mean one who is very grave, Muni can mean one who is an ascetic uh, or someone who keeps great vows, Muni can mean someone in a renounced order, Muni can also mean a saint, Muni can also mean someone who disagrees with all the other arguments. So he explained based on the Shastras these different meanings. Then the next word was nirgrantha. So he said what ni means, what grantha means. Then 
Uru Krama. He said, Uru means very great. Mm -hmm. And Krama means, Krama has uh, three different meanings. It could mean step. It could mean throwing the foot forward. It could mean power. It could mean a systematic method, a forcible attack. So Uru Krama can mean anything. One, if you combine Uru and Krama, it could mean one who is whose step is great, or it could also mean the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then he said different meanings of Kurvanti, different meanings of Hetu. Hetu can mean a cause, or it could have different motives. Then he said Guna has so many different meanings. It means quality. It means transcendental quality. It means quality of this, the three modes of material nature. Or Cha, even he said, Cha and Api are also these conjunctions which, which can have different meanings depending on the context that they have. And he explained all these different meanings according to Shastra. And then he gave this conclusion that on the whole, Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. It can only be learned through devotional service, not by intelligence, not by speculative methods, not by imaginary uh, commentaries. So he engaged, he actually beat Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya at his own game. <laughs> Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was saying, knowledge is supreme. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, look, I also understand knowledge. You spoke nine different meanings. I gave you uh, 18 different meanings without touching your nine different meanings. I understand what knowledge is, but my conclusion is devotional service is higher than knowledge. In fact, if we engage in bhakti, then jnana and renunciation, vairagya, both come automatically. We can go separately. If we go towards jnana, we have to cultivate vairagya separately. But if we perform bhakti, both jnana and vairagya come together automatically. So he explained, you are asking me to maintain my renunciation. My renunciation can be maintained not by jnana, but by bhakti. And uh, this is how he explained all these different explanations of Atmarama verse. And Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya was just struck with wonder. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his different potencies, his transcendental qualities, has all inconceivable promise. And it's not even possible to explain them fully. And Sarabhama Bhattacharya was just struck with wonder. He understood. This Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not an ordinary person. In fact, he's not even an extraordinary person. He's beyond. He is Sri Krishnam in person. And Sarabhama was completely astounded and speechless. He then began to slowly understand that Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu is not an ordinary human being but the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. And he started regretting his ignorance. So thus we come to the conclusion. And let's now listen to the Falastuti, that anyone who faithfully listens to this pastime and who derives joy from listening to this pastime is immediately liberated from the entanglement of the material world and attains Lord Chaitanya's personal abode, Shweta Dvipa, in Goloka Vrindavan. These are very, very confidential pastimes of Lord Krishna and Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu. Hence, one is assured the shelter of the Lord if one sincerely hears them. Will, and they will indeed be blessed by the Lord's direct association and will swim in an ocean of devotional love. Such a sincere listener becomes perfectly happy in life and will definitely see the beautiful moonlike face of Lord Chaitanya directly. Adhyapi halila kore, shri kore rai, kono kono bhagavai, dekhi bare pai. 
Yeah, which means Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are being performed even now. Whoever is blessed by the Lord to see can see, others cannot see. So today's Japa tip of the day is that one time we actually had the blessed association of one of Srila Prabhupada's very dear disciples, His Grace Mukunda Danta Prabhu, and he was um, sharing with us that this is actually not found in any book or um, it's not written down, but it is told by Srila Prabhupada personally. And Srila Prabhupada had given this personal instruction to one devotee. He was chanting and Srila Prabhupada said, um, how are you chanting? He said, Prabhupada, I'm on my beats, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. He said, are you able to hear your Hare Krishna Mahamantra as you are speaking? He said, oh, but sometimes, but my mind does wander away and I have to bring it back. Srila Prabhupada said, do you not want to know a tip by which you can switch and bring back your mind on chanting, hearing the holy names? He said, yes, yes, Srila Prabhupada. So then Srila Prabhupada took out his beads and he showed this way. He said, Srila Prabhupada said, that when we chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare, Hare, Hare Hare. So did we understand what Srila Prabhupada did? I'll show it again. Srila Prabhupada did like this. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Srila Prabhupada explained that when we chant Krishna, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra's first part, make your beads dance. Because Krishna is the supreme dancer. He is Nataraja. Or massage your beads. Massage the beads. So like make, the lotus feet of Krishna. Make your beads dance like this. And massage the beads this way. And when you come to chant Lord Ramachandra's name, Rama, at that time, you can keep it straight. No moving. Lord Rama is Mariada Purushottam. Lord Ram's principles were always straight. So therefore, we keep the beads straight. And we don't move while we chant Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the way it goes is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is the Japa tip for today. And we hope that how it has helped us, we hope that it would help you all also. So when we are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, if our mind is going anywhere, as soon as we stop and we you know, for Hare, we have to remember, oh, for Hare Rama, Hare Rama, I don't have to make them move. And just Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That's a switch which makes our mind, mind come, come back. back to focusing on the holy name. And again, the next bead we go, we massage it, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So our mind, even if it has gone somewhere, again, we have to bring it back to stop the switch. And uh, that's an opportunity to again come back to focusing on the Holy Name. So we hope that this Japa tip would help everyone, all of us. So without any further ado, we'll just quickly chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra for the protection of all the devotees, especially for our dear AJ. We pray for him. We pray for our dearest Anjali Prabhu, who is... Uh, you know, recovering very wonderfully and we continue to pray for him. We also pray for Sukriti Mataji and for all other devotees and any other people who may be undergoing any difficulties in their lives. Namah Om Vishnu Padai, 
First, why did Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya advise Lord Chaitanya to study Vedanta philosophy? Second, for how many days Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was instructing Lord Goranga about Vedanta? Third, what is the explanation given by Srila Prabhupada for God is complete? Fourth, what was the famous verse quoted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to defeat the Mayavad philosophy? Fifth, what does Atma Rama basically mean? Six, how many explanations did Lord Chaitanya give for the Atma Rama verse? Seventh, what is the Falastuti? of listening to these transcendental pastimes. Thank you so much, dearest Ranjani Kopika, for these fantastic quiz questions. So let's open the lines for uh, questions or comments, reflections, and realizations. Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Mother Chaturvati. Hare and with friend now, our glorious Gosho, Srila Prabhupada and Guru Dev. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhuji and Mataji, for a wonderful session. Yeah, and uh, thank you for your Bajapa tips and thank you for your bhajan as well. So all are today outstanding, <laughs> especially the session which you said, right? So we learned many things from this. Uh, the main first thing which I liked the most one is like uh, how Mahaprabhu glorified uh, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya and then he placed his arguments, right? So that is most important, which we need to take it out in our life as well. Yeah, to be honest, yes, if we know something, uh, we will straight away that, no, your point is not right. My point is only correct. So we will do that one. <laughs> but how we need to follow, yes, uh, our principles of Mahaprabhu, that will help. Yeah, it will not hurt others, right? It will be good yeah. to have that one in our mind. And so you said like Mahaprabhuji, God is complete and it can be viewed in both personal and impersonal. But sources from the personal, right, Prabhuji, you said uh, that one. Yes. yes, supreme absolute truth is a person. So that's what you quoted. And that Chintya Beda Beda Tattva also you insisted in between. And uh, that Atma yes, Rama. Krishna says spirit. in Bhagavad Gita that yeah. Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matta Sarvam Pravartate. He says, I am the source of everything. Yeah. So here he says, I'm the source even of the impersonal manifestation. Shramanodhi Pradishtaham. Yes. So there are many verses. In Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna says, I am the source, uh, the person is the source, not imper person is the source of the impersonal. Yeah, yeah, Prabhuji. But they are predicting the other way, right? The Mayavadis, right? Yeah. Even though Krishna himself says that I am the source in Bhagavad Gita, but they are misinterpreting some other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah that is called oh, the this point. is not Krishna who is speaking, 
This is the impersonal within Krishna who is saying, I am the source. <laughs> so the impersonal is the source. <laughs> but, uh, no, but say, yes. okay. <laughs> and the beautiful verse you said, Narayit Prabhuji, we will memorize Atmarama verse 1. Cap chapter, I mean, Canto 1, 7, chapter 10, verse, right? You said, right? Yes. You really mesmerized the explanation, right? Which you shown in the PPT. Oh, these many meanings of a single word will have in anything, right? Oh my God, seriously wondered. And then summary also, you said, like uh, 61 meanings you just quoted in the PPT. I have seen that one. Okay. So the way I explained that both of them really, uh, if we itself seeing the presentation we got as I'm just imagining how Sarvama Vetacharya will felt that in front of. <laughs> the lord <laughs> yeah obviously we'll surrender to that lord right oh he's something different right so that is very very good and the same thing was discussed in naimi sharin also you told right in between that is very good yeah so many life lessons and especially the japati also so massaging the lotus feet when we say krishna and the mariyata purusha for rama right we should be straight mm -hmm. it's very very touchable one so, so many things to i don't know a few things i explained but uh, what i learned from today's class so many things to say. thank you so much for your wonderful session day by day it's very very nectar we are hearing from you both through so we feel like chaitanya mahaprabhu explained like this face how it will be nectar so wonderful Prabhuji and mataji yeah. and thank you for your presentation as well thank you so much it's very beautiful very very beautiful Prabhuji and mataji god bless you both of you <laughs> i'm not supposed thank to say you. that <laughs> no we need all the blessings all the yeah, time yeah. to serve everyone we need all your blessings thank you so much yeah. thank you thank you Prabhuji. Hare krishna that with pranam then with pranam Anybody else? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna Hare Mataji. Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Saram Prabhu. And her pranams. Beautiful explanation of Atmarama verse. In the, uh, that presentation, that PPT or PDF was so nice. Maybe you can share it in the group. You know, we can refer it later. Yes, yeah, we will definitely share it. Yeah, I like that. So, and of course, you know, beautiful explanation. Hard to understand everything, but, uh, you know, <laughs> and as, as he says, you know, chant, dance, and eat prasadam. That is so simple to understand. <laughs> chant all the times and never forget Krishna. You know, always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. That is the basic, basic thing we should understand. That is how to be in Krishna consciousness. So that is so simple. So thank you, Mataji, you know, Prabhuji. Thank you. Beautiful lecture. Thank you, Thank you again. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Anyone else? If there are any questions from YouTube Live or Facebook Live, uh, that can also be shared. That will be good. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Prabhuji, Dandar Pranam. Thank you very much for this wonderful class, uh, especially the explanation of Atma Ramwars. Uh, so many different explanations and uh, how Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was so very knowledgeable and uh, although he was a personalist, but by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, he became a personalist, but again, like Prabhu pointed out that Lord Chaitanya with uh, utmost respect uh, to Sarvabhama and then he explained the words. So thank you for that explanation. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Anishwara Prabhu. We are so grateful to you for your association, Prabhuji. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your realization. And Hare Krishna, Prabhuji and Mataji. Thank Hare you. And, uh, thank you for the wonderful class and wonderful Japa Tit Mataji. So, wonderful. so we can even more attentive. Like we have to know now when when we are uh, doing Japa on Krishna, we have to move our Ram, move our beat. And when Rama comes, we have to stay. Deep. So that way we can keep our mind on chanting all the time. You know, so such uh, yes. a wonderful. Yes. This tip was given by Prabhupada, then we won't find these tips in any books. But right, this is yeah. the power of the parampara. Uh, yeah. There are so many things which are not in the books, but from Srila Prabhupada, from the Guru personal association, we we get these uh, valuable little tips which can help us advance much faster. Yes, uh, yes. So that's the power of being in the parampara. 
because others others may say yeah all the books are there i'll just read the books and be but you won't find these kind of treasures in the, right, in the right. books and every class you bring one one tip of chap one chapati is so wonderful you know so every day we can remember those tips while we are chanting our japa you know so it's very good to go Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Prashant. Thank you. Such a wonderful uh, class today for the Atma Nam words. So yes, that Prabhu said, you know, if you can share in the group, so no, we can. No, we'll definitely share the PPT in the yes. group. Yes. Thank you, Hare Definitely. Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna, my dear friends, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, 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 Uh, it's a lot for me, Mataji, for my family. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Kesavi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Today's Japati is very nice. So may I know your name? Mitanjali Pradhan, Mataji. Mitanjali, Mataji. Jai. Hare Krishna. Today. Your name is not coming, so I couldn't. But I, I could recognize your voice. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Hare Krishna. Mata ji, you remember that uh, that day you were uh, explaining the glories of Jagannath Mahaprasad? Yes. And that next day only I got the Jagannath Mahaprasad. Yes. Hare Hare. Thank you, Mata ji. So nice job, Ativs. Thank you, thank you. Please, Hare Krishna. Remember us in your prayers. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Anybody else? If not, we will conclude our session here today. Thank you all so much for your association. We are so grateful to all of you. Vansha Kalpataru Vyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyasya. अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की थैंक यू माता जी थैंक यू प्रभु जी थैंक यू सो मच प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू वेरी मच माता जी एंड प्रभु जी दंगवन प्रणाम थैंक यू माता जी दंगवन प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा माता जी दंगवन प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा प्रभु प्रभु माता जी दंगवन प्रणाम थैंक यू माता जी प्रभु जी दंगवन प्रणाम Hare Krishna